Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Mattube. In this video, we are going to learn about Rolle's theorem. And we have to focus on three things, the statement, the geometrical meaning and the proof. Now, first let's uh, look at the statement. And this theorem was by a mathematician called Michael Rolle and it was from the 16th century, even before calculus was properly established. And one of the facts um, or a funny fact is he's a person who is who was more into algebra and he never believed in calculus because calculus was at the introduction time uh, like what you call in that era and anyway he made this um, what you call theorem specially for polynomials okay the statement goes like this suppose f of x is a function defined in the interval closed interval a comma b you know what's a closed interval right a and b are included and all the numbers all the numbers between a and b are also included and there are three things the function should be continuous in the closed interval the function should be differentiable in the open interval and the third one the function the height of the function at a and the height of the function at b should be same now if you ever have a function which satisfies all the three conditions that rolls have said then in between a and b there will be a point in between somewhere in between a and b you'll be able to find at least one point at least at least means minimum there will be at least one point in such a way that the derivative will vanish at that point. Now, let's go for the geometrical meaning. The word continuous means the graph of the function will exist without any break. Now, differentiable means, look at this, the basic definition of derivative is slope of tangent exists. Or rather, we can imagine a graph which is tangentiable everywhere and every slope of the tangent at any point can be calculated. And um, what you call f of a equal to f of b means, look at this. If you have a function defined from a to b, then f of a means the height of the function at a. And f of b means the height of the function at the point b. Or rather, this coordinate will be b comma f of b, and this coordinate will be a comma f of a. Now, according to the third condition, the graph of um, any function according to rolls should be something like what you call it can peak and it has to come back to the same point, or it can even be like this also. It can go like this, or it can take like what you call a twist, a turn, but it has to return to the same height. So, one last time I'll repeat, there are three conditions. First condition is the function should be continuous, that is the graph should not break at any point. Second one, the slope of tangent is defined at each and every point in the graph uh, in the open interval and the height at A and height of B are same. And what Rolls tells us is, if all the conditions are satisfied, then there will be at least one point where the tangent will be parallel to the x-axis. Look at this. If any line is parallel to the x-axis, the gradient, the slope of that line will be zero. You learned in very small classes. So, according to rules, if a function satisfies all the three conditions, then you'll be able to find a point C in such a way that there will be a tangent parallel to the see I can see a lot of points that is why he used the word at least at least means minimum there will be one greater than or equal to one okay now let's go into the proof so let f of x be a function which satisfies all the conditions of Rolle's theorem that is continuous in the closed interval uh, differentiable in the open interval and f of a equal to f of b now remember uh, when you do verification problems in Rolle's theorem, Lagrange's theorem, Cauchy's theorem, etc. 
you should always remember we never go for the actual definition that left hand limit right hand limit function value etc but we rather go for a casual uh, check for example you are supposed to know your bachelor student you are supposed to know that all polynomial graphs will be continuous from minus infinity to infinity the trigonometric functions sin x and cos x are continuous from minus infinity to infinity and the graph of logarithmic function is continuous the graph of uh, provided if x is greater than 0 the graph of exponential functions are continuous and the combination addition multiplication etc etc are continuous but beware the graph of tan x is not continuous because uh, like what you call you know tan 90 is infinity so automatically the graph will break at 90 degree so if they ask is tan x continuous or is can we apply rolls theorem for tan x you should say no if they give any interval for example if the interval 0 to 180 is given you can see that 90 degrees in between and at 90 degree the function becomes infinity so we cannot apply rolls theorem in this interval at the same time we can apply rolls theorem for tan x in the interval 0 to 45 degree okay now let's come to the point so we took a function which satisfies all the conditions f of a equal to f of b now before we start i have to tell you some basic things that you may have missed in class 11 that is the concept of derivative look at this when you say a function is differentiable you are actually claiming that you can find the slope of the tangent at the particular point and this is possible only if the left hand derivative at the point is equal to the right hand derivative of the point only if this these two limit exist then only we can say um, what you call the derivative exist now the definition of left hand derivative you can note it somewhere at a particular point c is limit h tends to 0 f of c minus h minus f of c by minus h and the definition of right hand derivative r f dash of c uh, is given by limit h tends to 0 f of c plus h minus f of c the whole divided by h okay now let's start so once more let f of x be a function which satisfies all the conditions of rolls theorem so basically we have a graph which is continuous differentiable and height at a and height at b are equal now there are three possible cases we will go for the easiest case that is the given function is a constant now look at this if the given function is a constant from a to b then the graph will look like this oh so obviously mathematically we use the word trivial trivial means something which is obvious obviously at every point if you draw the tangent it will be that line segment itself so at every point the derivative will be zero come on think about it what is the derivative of a constant it will be zero for every point in between a and b so what did rolls say there will be at least one point here every point satisfies rolls theorem okay so that's a trivial case now let's go for case 2 so this is the only case that we are going to prove case 3 we will write similarly so in this case we assume f of x is not a constant now let's think about it if f of x is not a constant then the graph might start increasing then it has to decrease do you know why because rolls theorem has three conditions the graph should be continuous it should be differentiable and what's the last condition the height at the point a and the height at the point b should be same so if f of x increases then it has to reach a maximum point and then it has to return back or another possibility is this is a and this is b so f of x might increase then decrease then again increase and then it has to decrease and it has to come to point b i mean f of b so because the height should be maintained anyway let's go for the simplest possibility let's write like this let f of x be increasing 
and let it reach a height capital M maximum point and then it come back to B let's go for the simplest one this is A this is B so the graph increases 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 eventually it has to start to come back so that it will reach the same height at B now we can write let C be the point where the function reaches a maximum let C be the point where the function reaches a maximum because if it has to increase it has to decrease so automatically a maximum will be created now what do you mean by a maximum point come on think about it in your class if you say one boy or one girl is the tallest in your class then what do you understand then we understand that every other person in the class will be uh, what do you call not tall as that boy or in other words let's say I take a point C minus H look at this I am taking a point to the left C minus H so what will be the height of the function at C minus H f of c minus h will be less than or equal to f of c once more i am telling you function value means height of the function now suppose i take one point to the right f of c i mean c plus h what will be the function value of course it will be less than m come on think about it m means the longest or the tallest person c minus h and c plus h are of course smaller because this is the tallest person okay so obviously we get c plus h um, what you call less than or equal to f of c because f of c corresponds to the maximum height okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to manipulate a little bit i'm going to write f of c minus h minus f of c less than or equal to zero f of c plus h minus f of c less than or equal to zero now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the definition of derivative. I hope you already noted it. So I'm going to divide the first inequation by a negative quantity. When you divide an inequation by negative quantity, the inequation symbol will be reversed. Yeah, you can go for any example. Now I'm going to divide the second inequation by a positive quantity h so there is no change so please note when you divide an inequation by a negative quantity on both sides the inequation will be reversed okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take limits so limit h tends to zero limit h tends to zero oh the above one is the left hand derivative right that is l f dash of c and the second one is the right hand derivative r f dash of c okay so this is equation number star okay now look at this what is the speciality of f of x it satisfies all the conditions of Rolle's theorem so we already used the condition continuous we already used the condition f of a should be equal to f of b that's why we know there is a maximum point now the only thing we didn't use is differentiable we know that because Rolls has already told the function under consideration should be differentiable now if a function is differentiable at a particular point let's say c then the left hand derivative should be equal to right hand derivative but here we are saying that left hand derivative is bigger than or equal to zero the second equation is telling us that it is less than or equal to zero so if the left hand derivative should be equal to the right hand derivative we have only one possibility that is the left hand derivative the right hand derivative should be equal to zero that's the only common point right that's the only point where they agree that is the derivative will be equal to zero okay now that's it so obviously Rolle's theorem is verified now case 3 case 3 we will not prove but we will state now another possibility is look at this this is a this is b let's say the function decreases first and obviously it has to increase right it has to increase and reach the same point because the height at a and the height at b should be same here we assume c to be the minimum point and the same proof 
but we write similarly like as in case 2 we can prove it so one last time i'll brief it so in the proof what we do is case 1 we go for constant function it's a trivial case it's an obvious case because at every point rolle's theorem will be satisfied because the derivative of a constant function will be zero because a constant function um, the graph will be parallel to the x-axis so at every point the tangent will be parallel to the x-axis or at every point the derivative will be zero now in the second case what we did is we took a function which increases first and then comes back so that a maximum point will be created and we call the maximum point to be c and the most important thing is f of c is the maximum height that means if you consider the function value before that it will be smaller if you consider the function value after that it will be smaller okay that's it so that's a proof uh, please make sure you practice the proof work out verification question because they always ask two things they can ask proof or they can ask um, a problem to be verified or they may ask some questions and they will ask can we apply rolle's theorem okay so that's it i'll be back with lagrange's theorem so till then my friends bye